Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're joining from. My name is Samira Dosani, and I'm the Business Development Manager at LifeScale, and I have here with me today, Paul. Hi, Paul. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm speaking from the UK. Where are you? You're in Canada? That's right, in freezing cold Canada. Uh, well, yes, we're just a bit of grey and damp in Britain, but uh, isn't it always? <laughs> okay, great to know. Well, we'd love to welcome everybody to today's keynote. Thank you for joining. If you're joining early with your coffee in the evening with perhaps a glass of wine. Um, and we want you to just, you know, say hello in the chat, in the live chat. There's a live chat to your right. You'll notice you can put, put in your username or any kind of name that you love, actually. Um, and please just say hello and what city you're joining from. We'd love to kind of see, um, you know, some participation early on, getting you ready for your day. And we'll also probably have some polls coming through just to let everybody know today. So tell us what city you're from, how the weather's like. We have some fun polls, uh, moderation done by LiveScale Tyler. So thanks for that. Um, so Paul, tell me while we're, you know, waiting for people to come in, saying hello to everybody, tell us a little bit about internet retailing and what you do. 
Well, uh, I'm one of the editors of Internet Retailing. It's an online uh, sort of news and research and analysis uh, resource uh, for the retail industry, focused primarily, as the name suggests, on uh, e-commerce. But obviously, these days, that really encompasses omni-channel in all its uh, all its varied forms. Um, I tend to cover specifically mobile and marketplaces, but within that, that's sort of morphed into being social and you know in-store use of mobile and you know really it's sort of i'm pivotal to uh, all the coverage of the company now because of my specialism in mobile uh, which is something i've covered uh, as a as a journalist for probably 30 years nearly um so that's what i do there i also work for the sort of research arm of the company retail x writing analyst reports about uh the use of technology in the various retail market sectors so luxury fashion um, grocery, that kind of thing. So that's uh, sort of what I do. Uh, you can find us at internetretailing.net on the internet. Uh, you can find uh, all my stuff therein, along with that of my uh, many talented colleagues who also contribute heavily to it too. So yeah, check it out if you don't already know it. It's uh, a very useful uh, resource. We've got a lot of peripheral stuff around just the news and feature coverage that we have out there. You want to know the answer to a, an e-commerce question, it's the place to go. That's so great, Paul. Thank you so much for explaining that. Um, and we just want to welcome everybody again, um, you know, those who are joining in just recently. So again, I'm Samira. This is Paul. We'll be your co-host today. Um, and we'll kind of go in and out as we go. And at this point, I'd love to kind of, you know, tell the viewers what you're in store for today. So you came to learn about global live shopping, and we will deliver that today. Don't you worry. So the agenda for today will include, we'll go through some live shopping 101. As you know, I'm sure you've read a lot about live shopping and most of the users here are probably familiar with the buzzword, but we're going to kind of tell you what we're looking into going into 2022. Um, we'll get into some global trends uh, that um, a G from Worldline will be joining me to introduce that concept and looking at kind of what they see in terms of uh, global, globally and global trends. And then, of course, um, you know, what you came for, the main event will be the live panel. And that will be, uh, we will have uh, Brad from Beekman and we will have Mike from Worldline joining us to do the panel. That will be the crux of our show today. And then at the end, of course, we'll take questions and throughout as well. So please use the live chat. I would really encourage you to type in your questions. Um, even if we don't get to them live, there is a moderator who can answer those questions for you on the live chat as well as we would love you to browse some of the products below. So we've had some fun products like reports to download or, um, you know, shoppable products like a consult with Worldline or a demo with LiveScale. So check out all the little icons, the products at the bottom, and you'll be able to add them to cart. Now, one thing to explain about the checkout flow is we would love you to kind of test it out. The only thing is please don't put in your actual credit card and check out. Go until the billing page and abandon in your cart with the products that you're interested in and we will get back to you because one of the beautiful pieces about live shopping in our platform at, at LiveScale is that we can also target those users who abandon cart. So today, of course, we don't want to charge you for anything. So do not put in your credit card again. And we will, um, as long as you get to the last billing step and you abandon the cart, we will be able to reach out to you and know what products you're interested in. And I'll keep repeating that throughout the show, but um, yes. So with that, I would love to bring on G from world nine and we will be presenting the the live shopping 101 trends and as, as well as global trends hi g how are you hi samira so happy to be here hello everyone hi so we wanted to kind of bring you through you know what is live shopping right at the roots of it, of course, um, it is that digitization of the home shopping networks is what we see, right? Um, we're seeing that live shopping today is really kind of that idea of a host, perhaps a key um, influencer in your, in your market or somebody who's internally very good at selling your products, knowledgeable, and you put them on screen and they're able to kind of co uh, have a conversation, a two-way conversation and dialogue with the viewers, such as we're having today. That two-way piece, of course, comes from live chat. Um, they're able to answer questions as brands. You can interact and have immediate answers to, to um, your viewers. From a viewer perspective and the buyer perspective, the neat thing is that you no longer have to be stuck on your couch watching a TV to shop. You know, really, you can make purchases, ask questions on the go wherever really that you have internet connection. So that's kind of the benefit to users. If we look at our first slide, um, you know, we look at some of the categories that, 
that are really booming in terms of live shopping. So fashion and beauty, you can see here, are kind of leading the way at 35%, 23%. Um, these two industries, of course, organically are high adopters of these, this type of digital technology. They have been popular from a home shopping channel perspective, and of course, the first to come to live shopping as well digitally. What we can see, though, really going into 2022 is more so um, our sales team is having more conversations with some of the other other industries. Believe it or not, automotives want to sell cars online, not just book, um, you know, request a demo, for example, um, as well as home goods, uh, consumer electronics and fresh foods really kind of taking charge. So these statistics are from McKinsey coming out of 2021. We love to see this grow. Our prediction is that some of the other categories, um, even that you don't see here, will pop up and these industries will continue to grow as we move forward. In terms of if we see who's uh, in the next slide we see or next graphic we see who is really shopping, we see this idea of, of course, you know, the selfie generation, the Gen Z's, the millennials, um, you know, they're the ones who are early adopters of live shopping. Um, this is how they love to shop. We notice that apparel and beauty products, again, are very popular for them. But again, as more brands go live in different categories, I'm sure they will adopt uh, shopping in those categories as well. It's just the nature of things, right? So if this is a new industry or sorry, a new target market that you're attracting or trying to adopt for your brand, live shopping, again, is a great way to kind of entice and attract this consumer to shop for you. What makes a live shopping successful, you might ask, right? So if you look at the next slide, you'll see that there's three pillars of success that we believe. There is a host, um, and we'll talk talk a lot about that with G when she comes on board, but how we see this globally as a trend. Now, host is traditionally, you know, in the um, old model, you would see a celebrity or somebody endorsing um, the brand and really people tuning in for that. Now we see for digital live shopping, it's actually usually somebody from your brand or somebody who's an expert at your at the products that are being, um, you know, sold that day on the live shopping that's usually somebody internal from your brand that has about 10x conversions so of course different kpis uh you know have different hosts that we would recommend but of course there is you know room for influencers um, there's room for somebody on your in internal team to be host and then the, the second piece of uh success a pillar of success here for live shopping would be the concept this is, you know, what is your brand, what does your brand stand for? Perhaps a storytelling concept of the founder. How did the brand come to be? People love the, that dialogue, that conversation, that authenticity is very important for live shopping. Um, you know, it's okay to kind of be vulnerable at these lives and people really connect with that. Um, and of course, just being true to your brand. And thirdly, we would see is some sort of promotion, right? So creating that FOMO aspect is very key, um, fear of missing out. So, you know, why should the user check out now versus at a later time? And that is, you know, you can do that in many different ways. Um, it's not just about discounts. If you're a luxury brand, it could be, um, you know, first access, never seen before, a product launch. There's so many different reasons to create that urgency. And, um, you know, brands really, really love that. And as part of the next slide, the last slide that I'll present in terms of live shopping, where we see the user journey and the flow, we've seen pretty high percentages um, coming out of 2021 going into this new year. We see about 80% purchase intention. So that is users coming in with a credit card or wallet in hand. They truly understand that they are going to be expected to shop at a live shopping event. So yes, not genius, but that is how now the viewers are seeing this as well. Um, we see about 45% engagement rate, so almost one out of two viewers engaging with um, you, know, you. That is also data behind the scenes that your brand can collect. Um, and otherwise, of course, engagement also leads to more conversion. So really, really great uh, uh, stat there. And then um, sales conversions, of course, um, you know, must be important to a lot of you. Um, we're having a lot of polls there. So you'll see that average conversion rate is about 17%, um, you know, uh, last year, coming out of last year. And that's really grown from 9% year over year. And then if net new uh, customer acquisitions is your goal, again, with the three pillars of success that we talked about, um, you know, you massage those and you find the right mix and brands have reached up to 50% net new conversions. Um, we'll put in your questions at the chat. We'll definitely get to them or a moderator will answer, please. At this point, um, G, I'd love you to kind of talk about some global trends that you're seeing from a worldline perspective. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, so happy again to take you through some of the data and trends we are seeing across markets. So if you go to the next slide, so first we can see that at the global level, we're definitely seeing that digital channels are accelerating post-COVID. Data has shown that we have moved at least five years forward in both consumer and business adoption. And this corresponds a lot to what we are seeing in the live shopping trends as well. So if we move to the next slide, I'll show you what's happening now actually in China. So nowadays in China, today, two out of three consumers are shopping through videos and the adoption is strongly driven by Gen Z and millennials. And one can say that nowadays in China, live shopping is just a lifestyle. It's no longer a trend for many Chinese consumers. And again, this reflects it in the live shopping revenue. In the live shopping event hosted by Taobao, as an example for uh, the single stay shopping festival, $1.7 billion of products are sold. So if you think about it, that's nearly $2.5 million revenue per minute. What is also very interesting that we see at the data from China is that the high ADV categories are growing very fast for live shopping. So examples like aesthetic medicine, cars, consumer electronics, and home appliances, they're driving very strong growth in live shopping in China. And I think that given that China has the most digital consumers of the world, it may provide uh, some very useful hints of the live shopping potential in other countries as well. So if you move to the next slide, I also want to show you a bit what we are seeing in the Western world, particularly in the US and European markets. So as you can see the data here that we're both seeing very positive signs from both the consumer awareness and the market growth. And two out of one out of two North American consumers are aware of live shopping. And this is the same with the one out of three European consumers. And if you look at the market data, McKinsey, the consulting firm, has predicted that if the momentum of live shopping continues, like what we are seeing in China, they're expecting to see 10 to 20% of all e-commerce are initiated by live commerce by 2026. And you also see that uh, there's very positive data we're seeing here for from CoreSight that prediction of uh, live shopping volume in the US grow to 35 billion by the year of 2024. And recently in a survey that is conducted by Forrester, we're also seeing a lot of positive responses on brand when it comes to their intentions to either uh, sustain their investment in live shopping or growing their investment. So in that survey it, uh, of, of global brands, it shows that 81% of all brands are saying that, that in this year, they will either increase or maintain their investment in live shopping. So in all, I can just say that we are just at the beginning of very, this very exciting development. That's true, G. Thank you for all those statistics. Of course, Worldline is, um, you know, such a leader in global commerce. It's great to kind of um, see that the stats are aligning and live shopping definitely will be huge for the Western world in 2022. That's, um, you know, what our CEO and our thought leadership is coming forward as well. So thank you for those insights. Um, if there's thank any you. questions in the chat for G later about global trends, please put them in the chat. Again, please test the checkout. I would like to remind the audience there's polls coming up, engage with them. We'd love to kind of hear what you have to say as well. Um, you know, um, the checkout flow, just want to remind you to please play with some of the products down below, um, add them to your cart, go all the way till the billing step, but please don't check out with your credit card. Of course, we don't want to charge you again. So just saying for the viewers who have just joined us, um, abandon the cart once you get to the last step of billing, and we will make sure you get answers to the products that you've answered um, and do not purchase anything on this live. We're not here to obviously take your money, but we just want to show you and your brands what the capabilities are. So with that being said, we'll move into the next part of our uh, live today. And that is the live panel with, of course, our guest speakers. So I'd love to kind of now introduce uh, both of you. So hi, Mike. Hi, Brad. Um, Mike is uh, speaking from Worldline and Brad is from Beekman. So we'd love to welcome you both. And we'll have a really good, hopefully insightful session on live shopping. How are you both? Yeah, good. Thanks. The sun is out in Amsterdam. So uh, happy with that. <laughs> nice. It's cold and snowy up here in upstate New York, but it's beautiful. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling similar vibes to Brad in Canada up here for sure. So we'll start by, I have a few questions prepared. I'd love to encourage our uh, live viewers to enter their questions in the chat as they hear them. I'll start with some of our questions that we had thought of, and then we'll get to the questions in the, in the live panel. But, um, you know, Mike, if 
we can start with you. Just wanted to explain to everybody that, you know, um, Live, Shop, uh, Live Scale and Worldline, we're so proud of this partnership that we have globally with you, where we're helping brands really activate e-commerce and live shopping. So can you tell me what makes Worldline interested in live shopping and how you help brands digitally? Yeah, thanks, Samira. So firstly, we're very excited to be working uh, with you guys and you particular, Samira. So thanks for this opportunity. Um, a part of our core business is taking tier one uh, global clients and helping them expand around the world. So clients that are working in multiple geographies and my team and myself, we have a specific focus on e-retail as a vertical and we already provide payment solutions for these clients. And I think as many of our clients are, are super well known and innovative themselves. So it's important that through our partnerships, we're also able to innovate. And that's what we see with this opportunity uh, with LifeScale. So, um, you know, we've already heard some of the statistics uh, already um, from yourself and G. And I think, you know, we've seen the explosion in 2021 of live stream purchases. So it's grown 86% in Europe, uh, I think 68, 70% in North America. And, and G mentioned a great statistic. I'm a sales guy, so I was going to say 20%, but she said 10 to 20%. But I'm going to stick with 20% uh, of all e-commerce uh, sales by 2026 will be via live shopping. And I think why is exciting as well? I mean, for, for me, I'm not Generation Z, so I apologize for that uh, straight away. Um, so when we first started working together, like immediately we were thinking of our beauty and fashion clients. But like you say, We've immediately, you know, you can't stop finding other opportunities. So health and fitness, technology, and you mentioned uh, automotive. We're already talking to automotive brands. You can imagine, um, you know, putting a down payment on, having the demonstration. And, and it, it just, what the phrase we use is kind of see now, buy now, right? That's that's mm -hmm. the key thing that we're trying to capture. Yeah, it's true. Thank you for uh, for that insightful and no need to apologize that you're not Gen Z. Of course, we're all here. <laughs> I just to keep understand. hearing about Generation X all the time. I'm getting very bitter about it. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely all trying to, you know, tap into Gen Z's and understand yeah. their their mind. Right. So I think yeah. every couple of years, there's this shift that happens generationally. So we're all here on the same page. Um, Brad, thank you for joining us today from Upstate New York. Uh, Beekman is one of those brands that, you know, we are so proud to have you as a client. Um, you know, you guys are really kind of the leaders when it comes to lives, whether it be on TV or online. Um, so I'd love to kind of hear from you, you know, if you can shed some light on just your digital landscape at Beekman, um, you know, dipping your toes, of course, you're the CMO, you see all, all the initiatives. And I guess, you know, really the main question is what made you adopt live shopping as a new sales channel in the first place? Great. Uh, well, thanks for that compliment. And it's great to be here. Thanks, Samira. We love, we love the live scale team. Uh, you know, Beekman, for those of you who don't know, Beekman 1802 is a a skincare and body care brand started 12 years ago by our, our founders, Dr. Brent Ridge and Josh Kilmer Purcell, uh, when they had a farm in upstate New York here and they inherited 100 goats and they started making goat milk soaps with their neighbors around their dining room table. So we say the company started with 100 goats in one act of kindness. Uh, and to this day, we still call our customers, our neighbors. Uh, in terms of distribution, the company really started to boom when we went on traditional TV retail, starting on Evi and going to HSN and then to QVC, ultimately becoming the most productive brand uh, in beauty across both channels. Uh, as the company grew, we really started booming in our D2C business, started building a strong social presence on Instagram, and this past year really blew up on TikTok. Uh, and we also shifted into more skincare from body care as a strategy for the company uh, and launched in an Ulta beauty stores as well. So we started to recruit in a newer millennial Gen Z customer as well. So we thought to ourselves, like, what if we could take all the learnings that we had on QVC and HSN, but really take that and spin it into a new concept and a new way to go after this younger customer and live shopping was, was really the obvious choice for us. Okay, great. And, um, uh, you know, the next question is for Mike. Um, we wanted to kind of understand, you know, the retail context a little bit. Of course, you work with a lot of large retailers and what does live shopping mean to them? So Mike, you know, how do you see live shopping impact retail as, you know, the next big trend from an omni-channel perspective? Yeah, so um, yeah, good question. I, I, I think um, in some of the geographies we work in, 
um, particularly in Asia Pacific, China, which G mentioned, it's not really the next big trend. It's the big trend. So it's now. And if we see the growth, I would kind of say, yeah, is it? Is it we just, it's here, right? So now it, it's all about adoption. And uh, I think it's it's been a perfect storm, really, in many ways. So we've seen that acceleration. Uh, Brad mentioned a, a couple of the elements there because it, 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 it's really com combining um, social media, the, the popular popularity of video now, particularly with the gen Generation Z. And of course, with all those technological advances, uh, it's really providing that solution just at the moment where, you know, guy, people are stuck at home, there's lockdown, quarantines, and, and uh, the consumers of our clients are really looking for a substitute for that in-store face-to-face -face experience. So we knew this was going to come, but it's just happened, you know, really super fast. And it's given, you know, companies uh, like uh, Bakeman and, and clients like ours to, to, to use social media to drive their marketing. So we, you know, you, you, you can imagine, right, this, you know, the, the way that storytelling engages the audience and, you know, driven again by, um, uh, I suppose, the, the way that, that, that you can interact through social media it builds awareness and trust and interest in the in the products that that our clients uh, are looking to sell. So, you know, uh, I think that that again, in China it accounts for twenty percent already of all online commerce. So that's all online commerce, and you know we can see that already being I I exported. And and I and I see you know with n not me of course, but I have two uh, late teenage daughters and. Uh, they, uh, it, they, for them, it's, uh, you know, they're, they're with their friends shopping in the live stream, chatting with each other. It, it's like the experience that they would have had, bless mm -hmm. them, in a store, but they're doing it on the sofa. Yeah, it's true. It's really that gamification aspect, yeah. right, that, that really captures that target market. And to your point, I mean, Gen Zs and millennials, of course, are both, um, you know, really adopting this quicker. But like we said, I think at the beginning is as new industries start to adopt live shopping, which they already are starting to in 2022, you know, new types of customers will come on board. And, you know, I think knowing what we've learned today from that pivotal Gen Z, they've allowed obviously live shopping to become better and better and become westernized as well, right? There are yeah. differences, of course, globally on how users interact with live shopping, but also how brands portray themselves, right? We here in China, like the lives are nine hours long. And so in, in imagine that we did a nine hour webinar right now <laughs> i think we... guys news flash the why the webinar is going to last another eight hours so <laughs> we're that's just like gonna... a threat samira right <laughs> yeah um brad i guess back to you that's a good question about you know we talk a lot about um social but i guess in terms of hosting we talked a little bit about that as our first pillar to success in mm. terms of, you know, when you look at live shopping hosts, um, maybe we can show a little bit of their show um, uh, B-roll going at the back to see some of your Beekman shows so people can see it live. But as you're, I'd love to kind of get your take on, you know, who do you prefer as kind of your host? What is your host strategy in terms of, uh, you know, whether it be a KOS, which we call in live shopping, a key opinion seller or KOL, which we call a key opinion leader. And what are your thoughts on, you know, traditional uh, social media hosts versus somebody from your brand? Got a, a lot of questions in there. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it starts with something. Mike, Mike hit a key word about storytelling. So I think before you even get to the host phase, it's like, what is your story and what is your brand going to stand for on this platform? I mean, we, our, our founders are on QVC and HSN. So, you know, what people would probably have expect us to, to have done is to put those guys onto our live shopping, but we took a different approach. Actually, we wanted to have a new show about more skincare focused, highly educational, we call it edutainment, very entertaining. Uh, and I remember sitting in our first meeting being like, how do we make this like must see TV? Like we wanna have a show. So we literally said every Thursday night, we're gonna have a show. It's gonna be at the same time slot when we know people wanna tune in. Uh, and who is the host gonna be? We have such incredible talent inside the Beekman 1802 organization. Uh, Allison Wagner, who is quite successful on QVC and HSN already, uh, became our main host. And then we paired her with other people in the organization. Uh, Corinne, who is our salesperson, is commonly the co-host. We have Aisha, our head of product development, when we really want to come in and talk about new products and launches and the skincare and the microbiome. I even went on for a Father's Day one to talk about men's skincare. 
we really have tapped into just the talent and the expertise inside our organization. And it's been really successful for us. Uh, in terms of influencers, we have partnered with a few more just to try to drive traffic and get more customer acquisition to get new people to come to our platform. We haven't leveraged them as the main co-host. We've just found it very successful to work internally, but it's something that we'll explore in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's great insight. Of course, as viewers are watching your show live or, or they're watching your past show, um, you know, it's really interesting to kind of see that beautiful studio that is also very branded, but also authentic, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe, um, like you said, the storytelling aspect really comes through. It's very authentic to your brand. People really connect with that. And really, we'd like to say that Beekman has had, you know, really, really great success in live shopping. So I hope you're all listening <laughs> and keeping an ear out for Brad. Again, if there's any questions, um, please please put them in the live chat. We will get to them. I have a few more prepared questions and then we will definitely get to the live chat. So viewers, please enter your questions for Mike and Brad that we can get to. Um, Mike, back to you, I guess, um, you know, I wanted to really get into deeper into like what you do with Worldline and how you help clients. Can you maybe give us an example of how you support a specific client or any clients that you want to talk about um, with some of the innovations um, and global landscape uh, trends that you guys embrace? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're really lucky to have some truly global brands. So, too, uh, we work with uh, companies like Asos and L'Oreal, and it's a shared customer, Samira and yep. uh, Shein. Um, and... Uh, I think what I would highlight before, you know, to summarize, it's really, for them, it's important as we see, it's, it's, it's a mobile first world. Um, and for them, it's key that they, they, uh, they're building their um, experience into a social network and trying to create a sense of community. Now, where, where we fit in with this, of course, is for us, it's, uh, and it's, we use a word, uh, we use a word, uh, quite a lot it's not a beautiful word but it's conversion so you mentioned it a couple of times yourself so for us uh, even without uh, the the the, um, uh, the beauty of the of the live scale solution um, these clients want to convert uh, browsers into buyers so uh, mm -hmm. we have we have a, a customer journey and we like to try and simplify that journey as much as possible so an <clears throat> another not so beautiful word is that we help them to remove the friction um, so, you know, the first thing is that we build our solution uh, to be uh, uh, optimized for the mobile devices. We focus on an in-app experience. So you, you, you know probably that the, the Shein um, in the uh, iOS app store shopping cat in the shopping category is number one in probably 50 or 60 countries. Um, mm -hmm. So it tries to embed itself into the consumer behaviors. And, and um, you know, because more than 50% of all uh, online sales are through a mobile device. This is, uh, this is super important. So like I said, removing that friction through a truly localized payment experience. And then with the help of LifeScale, of course, we're at helping those clients to put their products in, in front of the consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's really great to hear. And of course you work with a lot of global brands. Yes, um, you know, L'Oreal of course being a common client and it's really great to see how, you know, we both kind of help them uh, forward. And I think some of the things you mentioned, uh, you know, the word conversion that, you know, I would love kind of Brad's intake here as well, uh, input here as a brand, you know, what are some of those KPIs that allow you to kind of stand out? What do you pay attention to from a live shopping perspective? And are there any differences in KPIs between your other marketing vehicles? Good question. Um, I mean, that was starting off. We, we really were like, what are the key KPIs? And we just kind of jumped right in and started to see what happened. But I think number one is like, you need people to show up, right? Like who, how many viewers are going to get to that show? That's, that's probably the most challenging parts uh, of this. So we, our strategy was just to go all in. We, we blasted our email base. We teased it on social. We, we really tapped into something that came up into the trends earlier about that anticipation and the FOMO, like we launched new products or we have things like you saw in the video, like this crazy mini fridge that we did, or we work with partners and we do special bundles from other brands. So I think that's been a very successful tool, having unique things that we offer and then sharing that across all of our social channels and our emails, because we want to make sure that we're getting people there. And we have a pretty 
uh, crazy KPI that, that we try to get a thousand people to show up every time we do uh, a live show. So we achieve that most of the time, which is, which is yeah. great for the team. Uh, and second is how do you get people to stay and, and stay entertained? And, and what's really exciting for us is we don't just have the metric. We don't want to just have a thousand people show up. We want to have a thousand people one hour later when the show ends. And that drop-off rate is really a measure of our success of, are we keeping people engaged? And if you've watched the Blooming Skin show, uh, you know, Allison is hilarious, first of all. We get really yeah. zany, we wear crazy outfits, and we do like really fun things. And they literally just have so much fun that people just stay entertained. And then the second half of it is they know how to sell. They're, they're keeping people, they're anticipating uh, the, the next sales. Things sell out, and they, we talk about how they're selling out. We say how many products are left, and then we tease something new. And at the end of the show, we always have something special that we drop. So people really stay engaged throughout the show. Uh, and of course, uh, the last is you want people to buy. So conversion, uh, we, we try to keep that metric above the benchmark that you said earlier, you know, over 30% conversion rate is a key target for us uh, to really drive sales at, you know, one to $2,000 per minute is our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys have very successful shows. So um, you know, thank you for sharing that insight. And I think it's really great how you have these micro KPIs, I would say, right, in each of the segments. And I think that's really important for, I think, some of the brands here today to pay attention to. Ultimately, you will grow with that conversion, but it's almost like trial, having micro KPIs that are about engagement, authenticity, storytelling, which will lead to ultimately organic, even sales. So it's great to kind of, I love how you kind of positioned it for, for the funnel. Um, so thank you for that. At this point, I do have a couple of more questions, but I would love to kind of see how the live chat is uh, doing. So G, if you could maybe come back and help me um, understand if there are any clusters of questions that people have for Brad, myself, or Mike, um, and then we can, of course, continue the conversation on the panel. So we are keeping an eye on the chat. We strongly encourage also the audience if you have any questions for Mike or Brad or over questions on live shopping, we'll be happy to take it. Uh, for now, I saw the question earlier. I think we mentioned the nine hour live streaming show. So there was one question from the audience asking, what actually do these hosts do in the nine hour show? Um, sorry, the question was uh, the timing. Yeah, so the, the question was if uh, there's a um, uh, nine hour uh, live shopping show, so what do hosts do if the live shopping, you know, show okay. continues so long? How do they sustain sure. it? I guess um, that's a good question. And that was a joke, but it's actually reality in, in the Asian market where in China we'll, we'll see lives for nine hours. Um, oddly enough, you know, we've heard these hosts honestly lose their voices. Um, they'll go for like voice surgeries later and that's, I mean, I, I don't mean to laugh. It's, it's obviously a thing. Um, it's almost like that Adele phenomenon, you know, where they will go live They're They're paid highly. These celebrities or these um, sellers, KOS, like we mentioned, and they really do need to go live for nine hours. Now in the Western world coming to, you know, Europe and North America, as we're talking today, that is definitely an adaption of that nine hour live. We see lives up to with our brands um, in North America and Europe at, you know, about the one hour, 45 minutes to about an hour and 15 mark. This way you have ample time to kind of, um, you know, repeat some of the content, but showcase enough products. We would say about 10 to 15 products during that hour and really kind of show Shop, make your point and also say goodbye to the user. Right. Um, and so that's really kind of what we talked about. I don't know, Brad, like I, I see you shaking your head. If there's anything you'd love to kind of add from Beekman's perspective. Yeah. I mean, we found that an hour works perfectly for us uh, during the holidays. We did do a little one where we had Josh and Brent come on our founders as special guests. Uh, and we had a little bit more fun and played some games and things like that. We did keep our engagement uh, throughout those two hours, but I, I don't think we could do that every time. An hour seems to be our sweet spot. Okay, great. Any other questions from the live chat, G, coming in? Yeah, there's a question also about the discount code. So how important uh, do you think is a discount code for the shows? Hmm. Do any of the panelists want to take that or I can take it? Sure. Yeah, you, Brad, have you, do you, is that something you offer yeah. with, through, with, uh, with your current lives? I mean, we, we just have our, you know, baked into the bundles that we do. All of our products that we sell are bundled at a discount, so we don't necessarily use discount codes. Mm -hmm. 
I think, um, you know, elaborating on that, like I said, the third pillar of success really is promotion. Now, one of the ways of promoting can be discount codes. But of course, like I mentioned, there's other ways of creating that FOMO. It doesn't necessarily have to be a discount code. It can be applied, of course. You can see some of the announcements coming on our live. Um, Tyler, if maybe you could activate that for the viewers. They can see the announcement of how you could promote. Uh, it's, of course, the ability is there from a technology standpoint, but it doesn't always have to be a promotion. It could be creating the urgency of never seen before, perhaps a VIP group of customers who are shopping exclusively for luxury brands. Um, you know, other brands really do use kind of um, never seen before packages. We had a show yesterday with Finish um, and they had these never seen before like packages exclusively for the live. So that also sometimes helps in, you know, um, if, if that's kind of a CPG kind of brand. So different industries will do different things. And we have lots of best practices to share. So again, feel free to book, you know, that, that consult below the demo. We can definitely give you guys tips on uh, or create, how to create that urgency and promotion. But um, yeah, great question, of course, because every industry, every brand has its uniqueness and there's lots of ways to create uh, that urgency. And there's also a very interesting question from Betty about the live shopping audience. So to Mike and Brad, so what are the most surprising things that you have uh, seen, uh, what you have surprised the most about the live shopping audience? I can say Sarah. <laughs> I think what's, <laughs> what's, what's been most exciting for us is that we've been able to bring in a, a new demographic, uh, the younger demographic that we've been trying to capture that we've been successfully seeing on our e-commerce and social, but now through a different channel. Uh, and I think what's been so exciting is just the, the engagement on these shows and how people want it to be kind of weird and fun, of course, with that mix of selling and anticipation. So we just take that and we like push the boundaries. And every time we push the boundaries and get crazier and crazier, we get more and more engagement. So I think that's that's been the most exciting thing. And the team has fun with it. The audience has fun with it. Our, our neighbors have fun with it. And it's just been, it's been really fun uh, for everyone in our entire organization. Thanks. That's really great. Um, I guess we have one last question in terms of, you know, to, to kind of wrap up the panel. Um, thank you, you know, for the live audience to have so many great questions. We'll have our moderators continue to answer your questions. But I guess lastly, to sum up the panel, um, I just want to open up the, the question to Mike and Brad, both of you, like any advice or last tips that, you know, you want to share with brands that are new adopters or industries that are going to start adopting this in 2022. So any kind of piece of advice for our early starters here today? Yeah, I think for, for me, um, what we've seen from, from, the, from, the, uh, from the conversion element, from, from, from the closing the sale, I mean, we're very aware that the amount of effort and investment and time that, that uh, our clients are putting into these events. Um, and for our clients, they're, they're global events. So I think one piece of advice I would have is that in order to reduce the friction in that customer journey is to truly localize. So um, what I'm talking about is you don't want to get to that last step and then, and then be missing out because that final uh, element is uh, not localized. It's not a local payment product. It's not in local currency or local language. And I think what's, what, you know, we, we didn't really touch on it in any detail, but I think one of the unique elements uh, between live scale and Worldline is the interactive experience. So that means that you know you can make a purchase, you can make a payment without leaving the live experience. And I think that makes a huge difference. And again, uh, and that beautiful word that really helps with uh, conversion and also keeping the spirit of the live event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar to today, that integrated checkout. Good point, right? Yeah. Um, as the viewers are kind of testing that. Uh, any advice from you, Brad? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you got to think about what your brand story is. We keep saying the word storytelling, but and how do you translate that storytelling into your live stream uh, platform? So for us, it was like, okay, we, we have a great story around the, the goat milk and the science of skincare. And we, we honed in on that and we named it. I, I like to brand everything as a marketing person, but we gave it a name. We call it the Blooming Skin Show. Uh, so I think that's one. It's like, what do you stand for and how do you make your show stand out and feel special and unique? And then two, and this is where I, I think I, when I see other brands going on, I just want to like say like you guys need something to focus on is that mix of selling. You need someone who knows how to sell and you need that combination of entertainment and education and skincare. Like that seems for us at least to be the combination. I think when some people just pull on an influencer that may be really well known, but they don't know how to sell 
that's where I think brands are falling flat. And last, I think is what I kind of said, like just have fun with it, build that anticipation, drop new products, build that, create that FOMO, make people want to not just tune in that time and stay throughout the show, but can't wait until two weeks from the next show, whenever your next show is. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much to both of you for joining, um, you know, this morning or afternoon, Mike, for you. Um, <laughs> I'd like to invite Paul back uh, to help me close uh, with some closing remarks. So, Paul, hello. You've been watching Hi. us this, the, and listening to the panel. I guess, what are your thoughts about the show today? And did you what did you think? Uh, it's very interesting. I mean, it's a, a subject that I find uh, fascinating. I would like to uh, to say to, to Mike, particularly, that uh, it's about Generation Alpha is what uh, we should oh. really be concerned about, which are the uh, the children of the millennials. Oh, uh, my goodness. Because they're very much um, the next audience, and they're the ones that are on social. They're the ones that are just wedded to video, mm. albeit probably through um, TikTok and uh, if my kids are anything to go by, YouTube. Uh, but I think that sets their mindset for, for video interaction. They don't think of it as unusual they'll expect mm -hmm. they'll expect live streaming and live video interaction with everything i think mm -hmm. so and um i think as as, uh, as both uh, brad and mike said it's it's not really the next big thing it's here but i think it's going to be the the key way that people interact with mm -hmm. brands it's that sweet spot isn't it where uh, where social media suddenly becomes much more like the real world which is obviously a great sort of way for social commerce to become really important so mm -hmm. um i think it's great to hear how uh mike's clients are, are doing with it and how um brad is really leveraging it um i think we're going to see a lot more uh, only today in fact here in the uk marks and spencer have uh, rolled out live streaming um or experimenting with live streaming on tiktok mm -hmm. so um I think for a brand like Marks and Spencer, I don't know if people uh, worldwide tuning in are that familiar with them. They're, they're, they're often seen as a reasonably staid mm -hmm. retail brand. Um, it's where your mum sort of buys uh, buys her clothes. Or you, you know, that, that's sort of uh, part of its sort of perception. And I think the fact that they're embracing live streaming is, is really, well, one, they're trying to target a younger audience, but two, I think it shows how they see that this is going to be uh, an important way yeah. of, of uh, interacting with their audience. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fascinating subject. I think it is the sort of future step of the internet before we all start wearing headsets and doing it on the metaverse. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's where we're going, uh, where we're going, I think, in the immediate future. I think the lessons you can learn from how it's taken off in China uh, really need to be applied. And I think, yeah, 2022, this time next year, so early 2023, I think we'll see a lot of retailers doing this it'll be much more commonplace mm -hmm. yeah it's true and I think just coming out of 2021 a lot of brands had a lot of questions now we see even just conversing with new brands who want to adopt this new industries they have a lot more knowledge at their fingertips on how to do this they're ready to activate so really to your point Paul I think this time next year you know you, if you don't do it you're kind of going to be left behind if you're there's still that window right now of where viewers are being forgiving when you're testing something or piloting something so really this is the time to kind of do that and of course we have lots of brands to learn from including Big Pin today who really have you know mastered the art of this and and really uh, using that, leveraging that for their brands for success. So yeah, we hope everybody enjoyed the show today. Um, apologies if we didn't get to your questions live, but please keep them coming. We do have a moderator who can moderate your chat. Again, I would like to remind you, uh, we have a few minutes to just let you test uh, the product. So again, if you haven't been able to and you joined us late, please uh, check out with the products um, until the billing step, the last step, do not put in your credit card. We don't want to take your money um, and just abandon that card then. And we will get back to you on the products that you needed to. So whether it be that white paper report, um, um, you know, consult with Worldline, a demo from LiveScale. And of course, everybody will receive the copy of today's keynote as a summary that you can share with your teams. So really encourage you to do that. And if there is nothing further, we'd love to kind of close it out today. Thank you for joining us. And we'll hope to see you at the next keynote, which will be next month with different speakers, different guests. And we will be announcing that shortly. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, G, for joining. And thanks to MXL for their amazing production as well. And behind the scenes, thank you to Tyler for moderating today from LiveScale. And we will see you at the next one. Bye, everyone.